Throughout its long history, journalism has remained an endeavor in which a person, if endowed with talent, determination, and wherewithal, can make a difference, though not always a positive one. My dear friends, that among other things in the National Union for Social Justice, we are Christian in so far as we believe in Christ's principle of love your neighbor as yourself, and with that principle, I challenge every Jew in this nation to tell me that he does not believe in it. Father Coughlin emerged as a radio priest during the Great Depression when his rhetoric focused on the economy. He appealed to the lower middle classes by demonizing bankers and the wealthy elite. He also had political power, effectively gaining followers for Franklin Delano Roosevelt. After failing in a personal attempt at politics, his rhetoric shifted to anti-Semitism in order to drive up ratings. Coughlin's talent was in his speech. He had a relatable and rousing quality to his voice, and he would often use colloquial terms such as damn and lousy in his speeches. His rhetoric decreased in accuracy over time. His attacks on the Jews became increasingly heated, and he even defended the Nazi party in Germany. Eventually, he was ousted by the media and later the Federal Bureau of Investigation. He remains a prime example of the power of mass media at controlling public opinion. His legacy of truthiness and emotionally charged speech reflects in modern demagogues. The views expressed by the host on this show, who happens to be me, are not necessarily the views of the staff, management, nor sponsors of this station, but they ought to be, and soon will be. My friends, I come to you tonight behind a blue dot because I demand anonymity for my own safety. Why? Because I stand accused of being one of the most heinous Americans alive today. Why? Because I believe in the power of the individual. I believe in limited government. I believe in you keeping more of your money. What does that make me? It makes me a conservative. Rush Limbaugh came onto the scene in the 1980s with a popular radio show that would eventually air on television. This modern demagogue uses many of the same rhetorical devices as Coughlin, along with his own sardonic humor to sway audiences. Limbaugh has been criticized for sensationalizing topics with half-truths in order to gain viewership and promote his neoconservative agenda and unrelenting partisanship. I don't know of anybody who died from torture. I do not Me, I'm ever not forced to torture people. I you do remember not World War II, the ever Nazis, the Nuremberg trials? Do you I, remember the Nuremberg trials? Charles. Cross Barbie? Charles, huh? let me say, Barack Obama What's the matter is, with you? Barack, you never even served in the military. Barack Obama I served in the is, Marine Corps and the Army. Charles, Barack Obama is President of the United States today because of stupid, ignorant people who think like you do. You pose, you and your ignorance, are the most expensive commodity this country has. You think you know everything. You don't know diddly squat. You call me a Nazi? You call me somebody who supports torture? And you want credibility on this program? You know, you're, 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 you're just plain embarrassing and ludicrous. But it doesn't surprise me that you're the kind of Republican that our last candidate attracted. Because you're no Republican at all, based on what the hell you've said here. Ali is a modern-day demagogue who's aired on television. Like Coughlin and Limbaugh, O'Reilly uses many half-truths to support his opinion when relaying his message to the public. His show, called The No Spin Zone, is ironic because O'Reilly is notorious for putting his spin on his political news. But our winner, Billow the Historian, the man who made the Americans the war criminals at Malmody, the man who evidently cut most of his history classes, gets into a debate with Alan Combs about the propriety of Obama meeting Hugo Chavez. Do these people have a problem with Mao and Nixon, Combs asked, and of course you worked for Richard Nixon. I mean, Nixon goes to China. Do you have a problem with 
Billow interrupts. It was Joe and Nixon. Mao was not involved. Combs, there was. Billow interrupts again. Yeah, Joe. All right, but okay, all those points are valid. As long as you realize it was Joe and Lai, not Mao Zedong. Combs, flustered, says, Joe and Lai. Oh, okay. So Bill is saying that when Nixon made his historic trip to China in 1972, he never met with Mao Zedong, Chairman Mao. He only met with the premier, Zhou Enlai. Do we have that film? So uh, at the summit here in China in 1972, who's that guy Nixon's shaking hands with, Bill? Alfred Hitchcock? <laughs> Jeez. Broadcasters we have examined has misused their abilities and position to promote personal agendas of truthfulness and hatred. Coughlin attacked the Jews with economically fueled rhetoric. Limbaugh attacked seemingly everyone with tasteless humor to promote neoconservative values. O'Reilly combined an entertaining format with half-truths to spread similar neoconservative values. Their messages have reached millions and always wound up in D.C., sometimes carrying legitimate political weight. Limbaugh and O'Reilly broadcast their hate-filled messages to the public on radio and television every day. With millions of Americans listening and watching, it can be asserted that these individuals, much like Father Coughlin, make a difference in public opinion. Their effect on public opinion, however, is one of toxic half-truths that effectively cripple healthy public discourse in their listeners and viewers.